gentlemen, let me jump into this HBCU power rank, and we are now headed into week three. And listen, last week I left question marks. You had to have had questions too. Nobody looked like they were separating themselves. And so I said this week, instead of leaving question marks, let's just throw some shit on the wall and hope it's sticking. That's all I'm doing right now because, once again, the universe will balance itself out. But I'm going to start at the bottom. I'm going to go with Southern, and then I'm going to go with Jackson State at four and five. You know why? Southern and Jackson playing each other this week. No better way than Perry White to hype this game up and say it's a top five matchup of two teams that hate each other that are going to be playing this week. And that's a top five matchup in the Boom Box Classic, man. Southern versus Jackson State. I love it. Premier programs of the swag. They have names that sell itself. But I'm going to go with Southern. I think what you saw with T-Set. First of all, let's go back to the Magnese game, right? Everybody didn't. I don't think a lot of people saw Southern being able to even hang with Magnese the way that they did. And before anybody, before you start talking noise, I would love to see your team schedule some Southland teams like Southern has done, like you've seen Prairie View and Valley. What is Who is your team playing, right? Schedule a Magnese, a Nichols, and then let me see where you at. And for Southern. In that Magnese game on the road to be down 7-0 through three quarters, if it wasn't for that debacle with special teams, Southern may walk out of that with one. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, at the end of the day, they lost. Then you look at the resurgence of T-Set in this ball game last week when they pulled out Noah Bond. He comes in and reignites this offense and the fan base. He gave you something to say, man, if this kid can get going, and you had this conversation with me before, you said this kid has swag player of the year written all over him. Yeah. If he can live up to that, he's young. But if he can get himself going, Southern is right there. And trust me, Southern ain't a slap. Have you seen Southern's defense? Good luck. You got to come ready to play. The same way with Jackson State. I think with everybody with the hype, when you saw Jackson State compete at that number four spot against ULM, Jackson State for a while was going back and forth. The game got away from them. But then they come back in 50-piece lane last week, 58-7. to seven. I think Jackson State's defense is there. They're going to play hard and get after you. If Jackson State can find where they want to be at quarterback, them and Southern right there similar right now. Doesn't it seem like they're about what and what with a defense with trying to figure it out offensively? That's mm -hmm. why I think this game is going to be key. But Jackson, if they can find out that quarterback position, Jackson right now for what I saw, uh, number four. I'm going to go number three, Norfolk State. Why? I don't know. I just went there. Uh, shout out to Dawson Odoms. I saw how close they played against Florida a and in the first game of the season. I thought they should have won that game on national television, but a two-point conversion that did not convert, they lose by one point. Then they go get whooped up by Eastern Carolina, which everybody would have got whooped up as well. And then I think many people counted them out against Virginia State last week because Virginia State beat them last year. Dawson Odoms get his first victory on the season. The fact that they pushed FAMU and lost by one point, you got me. Beating Virginia State, if anybody watched that game, you will understand Virginia State is nasty. They'll whoop some of you teams while you're talking noise. Slow your roll. South Carolina State at the number two spot. Tennis Berry is building something. Going on the road once again to fam you. Both these two and three played against the number one ranked team. South Carolina State went on the road up 18-7 to seven into the fourth quarter, but allowed this game to get away from them. But then go on the road to Citadel and beat Citadel in a what I think is a crucial non-conference game for the MEAC and for South Carolina State to get on the right track. For me, that was impressive enough to jump them up to the number two spot. And, of course, FAMU, even with a loss against Miami, anybody, the way we see Miami play right now, would have yeah. went and took an L. You, you Lucky if you would have scored. Yeah. Miami, against Miami, FAMU was able to get nine points. FAMU still... The number one team, their winning streak came to an end, though, from last year. But other than that, fam, you still the top team. South Carolina State and Norfolk State both played fam, you and both had fam, you on the ropes. That's what gives me there at that two and three. If you can play fam, you on the ropes, you can play against anybody in black college football, in my opinion. And Southern and Jackson, uh, just because I think one of these programs is headed in a direction that's going to be success. The other one is going to be headed in a direction of still trying to figure it out as the season go on. That's why if T-Set can figure it out at quarterback, Southern may be headed to where I told you, that surprise team. And this is a game that could be a surprise win for a lot of people who counted Southern out to be at that fourth spot in the SWAC West. And then for Jackson State, they having that quarterback issue. If they can figure it out, I think if they can figure it out, They'll be headed in the direction, too, especially what I think of what's happened to Alabama State. But 
for me, everybody else has not looked good, and we're still trying to figure it out, even heading into week three, Scotty. 